Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. I'm Chris Rycroft, and in this video, we're going to look at how we can numerically differentiate functions using finite difference approximations. We're going to look at two different ways we can do this using both Taylor series expansions and Lagrange interpolants. Suppose we're given a scalar function f, and we want to compute approximate derivatives of f based on simple expressions that involve several samples of f. And as mentioned in unit 0, a convenient starting point for this is Taylor's theorem. And if we look at some small value h, then we can express f at x plus h in terms of f of x plus f prime of x times h plus f double prime of x times h squared over 2 plus f triple prime of x times h cubed over 6 and so on. And if we now rearrange Taylor's theorem to pull out the f prime, then we'll get our forward difference formula. And here we'll get f prime of x is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x over h plus f double prime of x times h divided by 2 plus some other terms. And if we neglect terms of order h, then we'll end up with this expression that our derivative can be approximated by f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Similarly, if we look at f of x minus h, we can use Taylor's theorem to say that that will be equal to f of x minus f prime of x times h plus f double prime of x times h squared over 2 minus f triple prime of x times h cubed over 6 plus other terms. And following the same logic, we can end up with a backward difference formula that says that we can approximate f prime of x in terms of f of x minus f of x minus h, all divided by h. And again, we neglected a term of size order h. Now, if we subtract the Taylor's series for f of x minus h from the Taylor series from f of x plus h, then we can write that f prime of x is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x minus h divided by 2h minus f triple prime of x over 6 times h squared plus other terms. And that leads us to our centered difference formula that f prime of x is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x minus h divided by 2h. And in this case we neglected a term of size order a squared. Now, if we combine Taylor's series for f of x minus h and f of x plus h, then we can get a center difference formula for the second derivative. And we find that f dual prime of x is equal to f of x plus h minus 2 f of x plus f of x minus h divided by h squared minus the fourth derivative of f of x divided by 12 times h squared plus other terms. And that leads us to a center difference formula where we say that f double prime of x is approximately equal to f of x plus h minus f of x times 2 plus f of x minus h divided by h squared. And again, in this example, we neglected a term of size order h squared. So let's now summarize these four different rules here. And when we think of these different rules, we can often refer to them using the term stencils. And stencil kind of encapsulates both the positions, like the samples of the function that we're using, and also the corresponding weights of each function. And we could therefore draw out the following diagrams. So with a forward difference, we're using a point xi, and we can imagine that there's some point xi plus 1, a distance h away, and we're using some combination of these two values. For the backward difference, we're using a value of minus h displaced from x, and that could be at some value xi minus 1. And for the center difference formula, for the first derivative, we're using the evaluations at xi minus 1 and xi plus 1. And for the center difference formula for the second derivative, we're using all three values together. We can use Taylor expansions to drive approximations of higher order accuracy. 
offer higher derivatives. And usually this will involve developing finite difference formulae using wider stencils, where, for example, we might sample our function at x plus or minus 2h or x plus or minus 3h. And we're going to take a look at this in more detail, but there's actually an alternative approach that can sometimes generalize more easily to higher order formulae. And here we can differentiate an interpolant. So we could sample our function at several points, construct an interpolant through them, and then look at the derivative of this interpolant. For example, suppose we looked at a linear interpolant through two points x0 and f of x0, and x0 plus h and f of x0 plus h, then the interpolant would be p1 of x, which is equal to f of x0 times x0 plus h minus x divided by h, plus f of x0 plus h times x minus x0 divided by h. And if we differentiate p1, then we'll find that p1 prime of x is equal to f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 divided by h. And we'll see here then that our forward difference formula drops out from this alternative viewpoint. So you could ask yourself, how could we generate a backward difference formula based on this interpolation method? And here we could do this by choosing interpolation points at x0 and also at x0 minus h. We could generalize this. For example, we could look at a quadratic interpolant, p2, using interpolation points at x0, x1, and x2, and that would allow us to derive something like our center difference formula for f prime at x1. And here then we could differentiate our quadratic p2 to get a linear polynomial. We could then evaluate that polynomial and that would give us our center difference formula. We could also take the second derivative of our quadratic p double prime 2 and that would give us a center difference formula for f double prime. And we'll now take a look at a more general example of using both the tail series approach and the Lagrange interpolant approach to derive some finer difference stencils. Let's now look at the general approaches we can use to evaluate finer difference stencils. And as mentioned, the idea here is to take several samples of our function f of x and combine them together in a way that can approximate the derivatives of this function. And here we're going to look at a specific example where we take three samples of our function at x, x plus h, and x plus 2h, and we're going to combine them together in a way that can approximate the first derivative at x. And we're going to look at two different approaches for doing this. The first method is going to make use of Taylor series, and the second method is going to make use of Lagrange interpolants. And let's first look at the Taylor series approach. So, We'll begin by evaluating Taylor series of our function at these three sample points. So if we look at f of x and f of x plus h and f of x plus 2h, then we have the following Taylor series. So at f of x, we just have a trivial Taylor series where we'll just have that this is equal to f of x plus 0 times f prime of x plus 0 times f double prime of x plus terms of order h cubed. And f of x plus h will have that this is equal to f of x plus h f prime of x plus h squared over 2 f double prime of x plus order h cubed terms. And f, f of x plus 2h will have that this is equal to f of x plus 2h f prime of x plus 2h squared f double prime of x plus terms of order h cubed. And what we're going to do now is we're going to write down a finite difference stencil that is a combination of these three function evaluations. So we'll have then that our Taylor series finite difference stencil 
at x is just equal to some combination of these three values with coefficients of alpha, beta, and gamma. And what we're going to aim for here is that we're going to take these alpha, beta, and gamma parameters so that f prime t at x is equal to the true mathematical derivative at x plus terms of size order 8 squared. And the reason that we're going to look for order 8 squared is that by taking three sample values of our function, we hope that we'll be able to combine them together in a way that will evaluate this derivative to this order of accuracy. So now to proceed, let's now look at the expression we have for f prime t, and we're now going to expand out this expression, and we're going to equate terms that are proportional to f, f prime, and f double prime. So we'll begin by looking at the terms proportional to f. So in this case, we will have that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to zero. And that's because in each one of these terms, we just have one term proportional to f. And if we look now at f prime, then we'll have h beta plus 2h gamma is equal to 1. And the 1 is coming from this term here, and these two terms are coming from the f primes in the beta and gamma equations. And then if we look at f double prime, we'll have that beta over 2 plus 2 gamma is equal to zero. So let's now combine these three equations and solve them for alpha, beta, and gamma. So from this equation, we can see that beta is equal to minus four gamma. And if we now put this expression into this, this equation, then we'll have that minus four gamma h plus 2 gamma h is equal to 1 and that will then tell us that gamma is equal to minus 1 over 2h and therefore we can conclude that beta is equal to 2 over h and if we now look at our equation for f we know that alpha beta and gamma have to sum to zero and we can therefore conclude that alpha is equal to minus 3 over 2h. And that will then give us a formula here that f prime t at x is equal to minus 3 f of x plus 4 f of x plus h minus f of x plus 2h all divided by 2h. And this will be a second order accurate formula. So now let's look at the Lagrange interpolant approach. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our three sample points and we're going to put a quadratic Lagrange interpolant through them. So let's now introduce a function L that is quadratic that passes through our three sample points. And then we can differentiate this L at x and that will give us our finite difference formula. So to make the math slightly easier, we're going to introduce a new variable z that satisfies z 
z equals 0 at x. And therefore, by having this coordinate here, z equals 0 at x, this will simplify some of our calculations. So let's now write down Lagrange basis functions And we're going to do so at z equal 0, h, and 2h. So we'll have, therefore, that L0 of z is equal to z minus h times z minus 2h over 2h squared. L1 of z is equal to minus z times z minus 2h over h squared. L2 of z is equal to z times z minus h over 2h squared. And now our Lagrange interpolant will have the following form. So our function L here will have the form L of z is equal to f of x l0 of z plus f of x plus h times l1 of z plus f of x plus 2h times l2 of z. And we can now differentiate this formula and we'll get that l prime of z is equal to f of x times 2z minus 3h over 2h squared plus f of x plus h times minus 2z plus 2h over h squared plus f of x plus 2h times 2z minus h over 2h squared. And now our derivative, the f prime using the Lagrange interpolant approach at x will be just equal to l prime evaluated at 0, and that will give us minus 3f of x plus 4f of x plus h minus f of x plus 2h. all over 2h. And we can see here that the formulae that we get using the Taylor series approach and the Lagrange interpolant approach are actually equivalent. And we therefore have two different approaches that we can use, and depending on the situation, we might prefer one over the other. For this situation, the Taylor series approach is perhaps slightly more direct, but we can see here that it involves solving a linear system for the coefficients. And if we got to a larger problem, then we would have more unknowns and we'd have a larger linear system to solve, and this might become more complicated. With the Lagrange interpolant approach, all we need to do is directly calculate the Lagrange interpolant polynomial and differentiate it, and therefore this does not require solving any linear system.